is upon us. New venues, new drivers, new teams, big shakeups, but the same old non-stop adrenaline-filled action as the world's premier powerboat racing series revs up for its 35th season. The UIM F1H Duo World Championship boasts an eight Grand Prix calendar for 2018, which will be raced in some of the most stunning locations around the world. Round one kicks off in May on the Arad River in Portimao, Portugal, the 10th time the Algarve Resort has hosted the season opener. Portimao is the traditional season opener for the flagship international series in world powerboat racing, and this year will be the 17th Grand Prix of Portugal. The championship then makes a welcome return to racing in Great Britain for the first time since 1994 and to London for the first time since 1985. The UIM F1H2O Grand Prix of London will be held at East London's historic Royal Victoria Dock from June 15 to June 17, offering spectators a breathtakingly up-close and personal opportunity to watch the world's top marine motorsport. London Tech Week offers um, a week's full of city-wide city, city -wide crowdsourced events. There's about 300 events going on during that week where we expect to um, host and celebrate tech at, at its best. Um, the um, expectations that we get people from C-level executives right through to tech enthusiasts coming down and enjoying learning opportunities, business opportunities, social and experiential environments, uh, for them to have great fun um, over uh, the course of the event. So it's going to be a jam-packed weekend. It's going to be a full weekend and it's going to suit everybody because not only have we got the Grand Prix, but we've also got a number of other events going on to keep the public entertained for the entire weekend. Well, for someone who's seen the race before, I can highly recommend it. You know, 20 boats thundering off. It is absolute dynamic, full of power, full of excitement, and not short of the odd spill and crash as well. So if someone wants excitement on the water, there's probably no better race to see. Yeah? Oh, it's, it's really good to be back here in London and for the Formula One to have a race, it's, it's fantastic. I'm sure there will be loads of people coming and uh, uh, it's, it's very exciting, it's good for the sport, it's, it's good for London. We are focused on the World Championship, uh, we lose last year, we finished second and uh, we want to win, but uh, if I can win in London it's uh, perfect because it's, uh, it's the end of my career and uh, if it's possible to win uh, the London race, it's, uh, it's a dream. Legs of the season end with a fourth visit to the internationally renowned spa resort of Evian, France, from June 29 to July 1st, where drivers once again tackle the unpredictable waters of the mighty Lac Le Mans, which will host the third consecutive and overall 22nd Grand Prix of France. The season leaves Europe and heads over to the Far East, where the first of two Grand Prix in the People's Republic of China takes place in Harbin's Hulan Estuary Wetland Park in August for a third consecutive year as drivers do battle for the Grand Prix of Harbin. Harbin is followed by an F1 H2O favorite and staple, the Grand Prix of Liu Zhao at the end of September, raced on the mighty Liu River, surrounded by some of the most breathtaking scenery in China. Liu Zhao will be hosting its 11th UIM F1H2O Grand Prix, and the event usually proves to be a pivotal round in the season quest for the world title. In November, there will be a third Grand Prix in Asia, with a location yet to be confirmed, setting the stage for another nail-biting finale to the season as the tour heads to the Middle East. The beautiful blue waters off the United Arab Emirates traditionally host the end of season doubleheaders in December with the penultimate round in spectacular Abu Dhabi, followed by the final race in Sharjah where the 2018 F1 H2O season will be decided. The Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi and the Grand Prix of Sharjah have seen some of the most dramatic races in F1 H2O history where... <laughs> Champions are made and unmade, and where teams and drivers push for an all-out last-gasp effort for the World Championship title. 
F1 H2O isn't just a sport, it's a way of life where each Grand Prix is a three-day celebration of racing, competition, nightlife concerts, parties, gala dinners, and where locals, fans, teams, drivers, and families mix, race, compete, party, and unwind. Now let's take a look at the teams and the protagonists who'll do battle for the coveted title of UIM F1 H2O World Champion for 2018. A UIM F1 H2O Grand Prix is stretched out over three days, with official practices spread out over the three days, a qualifying session on day two, and the Grand Prix race on the third and final day. The BRM official qualifying is typically a three-tiered session, with state-of-the-art timing equipment recording the performances of each boat to decide the final classification and starting positions. One is a 20-minute session with all boats entitled to run multiple laps at any time during the session, with the 12 fastest progressing into Q2. After a 7-minute break, the times will be reset and the remaining 12 boats would then run out for a 20-minute session. Again, they may complete as many laps as they want at any time during that period. At the end of the session, the six fastest boats will progress into Q3. The times are reset, and the top six boats from Q2 go in reverse order, dictated by the time set in Q2. Drivers go out one by one with a circuit all to themselves, and have two shots at laying their fastest times in a bid for pole position, which gives them the inside lane advantage on that crucial opening drag race, the commitment buoy. Once the starting lineups have been determined in the BRM qualifying, the teams are set for a multiple lap Grand Prix the next day, run over a minimum 35 minutes or a maximum 45 minutes. Any engine changes to the boat from qualifying result in a loss of their starting positions for the race. When the weather conditions are unsafe, qualifying can be reduced to two or even just a single session, while the usual pontoon start to the race may be replaced by a rolling start in rough conditions. The Grand Prix winner earns a maximum 20 points. Runners-up receive 15 points per race, third place 12 points, then nine for fourth, seven for fifth, five for sixth, four for seven, three points for eighth, two points for ninth, and a point for 10th place. Naturally, with a series like this, safety is critical. Two-time world champion Jonathan Jones explains. So as we know, safety is paramount. And what the boat builders have come up with over the years is what we call the safety cellar. This is the area from the back here, right the way forward, that the driver actually sits inside. That gives the driver total protection in the event of an accident or, in fact, the boat overturning. Let's start with the outside of the cockpit. First of all, this area here is what we call the crash box. There's a number of layers of foam built up in there. So if a boat actually hits the side of the cockpit, this area takes all the energy of the boat that hits it rather than the cockpit itself. So that just means that the driver doesn't get shaken up so much when he's sitting inside. When we move on from the actual uh, crash box itself, we come to the safety cell. The safety cell, as you can see, is made from carbon fibre. Many, many layers of carbon and other hybrid materials are incorporated in the cell. And this makes it almost like a cocoon that the driver is sitting in and gives him maximum protection in the event of an accident. Now you can see I'm actually sitting inside the cockpit itself. So you're strapped in with a five-point harness, you've got a really comfortable seat to stop people, the driver moving around inside. And then, once the driver's strapped in, this area here we call the canopy is slid over. So in the event of the driver turning the boat over... <laughs> maximum protection against the pressure of the water. Now when we look inside here there's an array of different buttons and switches. 
all very, very purposeful in, in the performance of the boat during the race. And the information that we have in here is not only available to the driver, but it's available to the crew on the bank and in the garages. So they're actually monitoring the way that the boat is running and the way the engine is performing during the race to give the driver maximum information to make sure that he gets maximum performance out of the boat. So this is how important the cockpit is. And over the years, it has saved so many lives, mine included. factor to the safety of teams out there on the water during official practice qualifying and racing is the Osprey Rescue Team. Osprey Rescue has over 50 years of experience and has established itself as one of the leading rescue outfits in the world of powerboating. Their services are offered at UK powerboat events and at international F1H2O powerboat races. Before the formation of the rescue team and their introduction of new ways of working, it was usual for an injured driver or crewman to be pulled out of the water over the side of the rescue craft, a painful process that invited worsening the injury from the accident, especially to broken ribs, limbs, or back trauma. He loses the boat on that back straight. Oh no, Jonas Anderson barrel rolls the boat. And the divers there, the Osprey rescue team on the scene. We can see the divers there working frantically and he's looking fine. The Osprey boat design also incorporates a crane, which again is used to support the cell out of water, thus giving the driver vital extra minutes to ensure no further injury is caused during extraction. An advanced onboard medical kit allows Osprey to support ventilation and circulation of a severely injured pilot while protecting the neck and spine with collars and longboard. Over the years, the team has accumulated a vast knowledge and expertise of rescue and has continually developed equipment and new skills. The team was involved in the testing of the safety cell which was developed by Chris Hodges to reduce the injuries during races and also pioneered a self-contained lifting device to ensure the driver and cockpit are clear of the water in the event of an accident to reduce the risk of drowning. Many rescue teams use the Osprey boat design and methods. No rescue is ever quite the same as another and the team has to react quickly, thinking on their feet at every incident. Osprey Rescue has proved a vital and game-changing addition to powerboat racing in general and F1H2O in particular. Thank you, Osprey. Tusen tak, Osprey. Grazie, Osprey. Dziękuję, Osprey. Kiitoksi, Osprey. Merci, Osprey. Siecie, Yuyung, Jojandwe. Shukran, Osprey. Grazie, Osprey. Last year's runaway team champions, Team Abu Dhabi, also boasted multiple world champion Alex Carella, who won his fourth world title in 2017 under team manager and mentor Guido Capellini, himself a legendary 10-time F1H2O world champion. But there's been a shakeup as Alex Carella has been replaced by one of the most consistent, talented and competitive drivers on the tour, Sean Torrente from Miami. He's finished on the year-end podium four consecutive times in the last five years, and although he had a bumpy ride in 2017, only managing eighth, he now has the might of Team Abu Dhabi to back him up in his quest for that elusive first world championship. The American wants to add to an impressive career so far, having earned four Grand Prix wins and a total of 14 podium finishes out of 41 races, with four pole positions to his credit. He's fast, he's aggressive, he's talented, and he's determined. John Torrente will have two outstanding teammates to race alongside him. The veteran, former world number two and seven-time Grand Prix winner, Kani Alkamzi, and his talented up-and-coming namesake, Rashid Alkamzi, who completed his first full season on the tour last year after debuting at the Sharjah Grand Prix in 2016. Team Abu Dhabi's perennial rivals, Victory Team, have caused some major waves going into the new season, having... <laughs> their latest high-tech F1H2O powerboat, the 2018 Challenger, 
which embodies the same cutting edge engineering as a legendary Emirati squad's multiple title winning offshore powerboats and which could well make it one of the leading contenders in the 2018 UIM F1 H2O World Championship. But there's even bigger news because Victory Team have snatched the Italian four-time and defending world champion Alex Corella under team manager Scott Gilman, another legendary multiple world champion whose racing day's rivalry continues against Team Abu Dhabi manager Guido Capellini. 2018 is in store for a classic Team Abu Dhabi versus Victory Team showdown. It's DAC versus Challenger, Torrente versus Corella, and Capellini versus Gilman. Racing alongside Alex Corella and Victory Team is the mighty Ahmed Al Hamali, a seven time Grand Prix winner with three top four finishes last season. Corella's pedigree is impeccable, the stats impressive. Four world titles, 15 Grand Prix wins, 30 podiums, 15 pole positions, and all from just 50 race starts. Having won 30% of races he's entered, he has one of the most outstanding records in the history of the sport, and he's still just 32 years old. In CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, it's business as usual, and unlike their UAE rivals, there are no dramatic switch-ups and changes going into the new season. The team will once again be headed by three-time consecutive world champion and last year's world runner-up Philip Schiap of France. Schiap is a late bloomer in F1 H2O. It wasn't until 80 race starts and 11 seasons into his F1 career that the Frenchman won his first Grand Prix in Kiev in 2013. But that win was a watershed and he has since gone on to claim another eight titles and the world championship three years running from 2014 to 2016. But the Frenchman's dream of becoming the first driver in history to equal Guido Capellini's record four consecutive world titles was shattered by Alex Corella, who was himself denied the same honor by none other than Schiap in 2014. The rivalry will continue between these two extraordinary racers in 2018. Racing with Schiap will be teammate Peter Morin, a longtime co-driver with Schiap in other series including the Rouen 24-hour. Morin racked up 10 points and finished 12th in his debut year last year for CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, adding valuable points for the team standings. There's been a shakeup in Emirates racing as Polish driver Bartek Marsalek joins the team, switching over from Blaze Performance. Marsalek finished a career best fifth in two Grand Prix races last year and also got a career best qualifying in third position in Sharjah, ending the season 10th in the rankings just behind his ninth ranked Emirates racing teammate Moritz Stromoy of Norway. Stromoy is a former Grand Prix and pole position winner and she nabbed the season best runner-up finish in the penultimate race of 2017 in Abu Dhabi after finishing second in qualifying. The two finished last year on 21 points apiece and they will go into the new season with high hopes. Marshall X place in the Blaze Performance lineup is Simone Bianca Schuft, the first German woman to compete in the UIM F1 H2O World Championship. Schuft has a wealth of experience and success that she's bringing into F1, having raced F4, F2 and the Rouen 24-hour races over the last 10 years. She will have one of the most experienced and successful drivers in F1 H2O to ease and guide her into the series. The 12-time Grand Prix champion and former world runner-up Francesco Cantando of Italy, who's been on the tour more than two decades. Cantando is the driver and manager of the team, and he will surely be an invaluable mentor for his rookie teammate Simone Schu. The lineup in another well-established F1 H2O team, F1 Atlantic, remains the same for 2018 with Portuguese ace Duarte. <laughs> Benevente and 
industry and Grant Trask lining up for their second successive season together. Benevente is one of the more experienced drivers in the UIM F1H2O World Championship starting his 20th season on the tour. He'll be looking to kickstart his year with the same strong start he made in 2017, bringing his more Formula Hull home for a podium finish at his home Grand Prix in Portimao, where he made his championship debut in 1999. Amos, Trask will start his second full term on the UIM F1H Duo Tour after a promising start. The 29-year-old from Brisbane picking up a best fifth qualifying and the sixth place finish from his eight starts having debuted in Abu Dhabi in 2016. This year Trask will run a GTR hull designed and built by his father Bob Trask. In Team Sweden Eric Eden will line up for his first full season in the top flight alongside Jonas Anderson. Eden stepped up from F2 to join the team for the final two rounds in 2017 in Abu Dhabi and Sharjah, but had to wait until Sharjah before making his actual race debut, bringing his DAC home in 11th spot. He will race alongside another highly experienced veteran, Jonas Anderson, the five-time Grand Prix winner who's finished in the top five in the year-end standings for the past two seasons. I got a trip on the lane. One of the most successful and competitive teams on the tour, Mad Croc Baba Racing, sees no change in the lineup as 2007 and 2010 world champion Sammy Celio is again joined by his young Finnish protege, Philip Roms. Having begun testing for the new season, Celio will also have a new boat on the way for the season opener in Portimao as he begins his bid for a third world championship title. It was a rocky and bizarre road for Celio last season. After being on the podium twice in the first two races and leading the title race, he came to grief unaided in PRM qualifying in Harbin and Liu Zhao and was then an innocent passenger in two spectacular offs in Abu Dhabi. Yet despite not picking up points in four of six races, he still managed to finish sixth in the standings last year. Philip Roms gets the green light for his seventh season alongside Celio and remarkably is still one of the youngest on the tour at 24. Of the current crop of racers, at 18 he became the youngest driver to make his F1 H2O debut. He's finished on the podium twice, has a career best P2 in qualifying and highest season ranking of six. Another team to look out for is Maverick F1 Racing led by team principal and main driver Cedric de Guin of France. The Frenchman returned to F1 H2O racing in 2016 after an 11-year absence, producing a career-best fourth-place finish upon his return. De Guin welcomes Mike Shimura, who leaves Emirates Racing to join Maverick F1. The young German former F4 champion has racked up eight points from 13 race starts since his F1 debut in 2016, and he'll be racing his DAC hull alongside De Guin's Moore boat in 2018. going to be yet another spectacular season as the UIM F1H to a World Championship goes into its 35th year. See you in Portimao, Portugal for the season opener in May.